All right, guys, let's take a look at what we have here. We've got something from the local courthouse where they're trying to send a, well, they've sent an email that has a folder. And in order to open it, I have to just click on here. This is a Microsoft program. Go ahead and open it. And it says, request verification code. Check this out. This is using some sort of copyright that hasn't been updated or at least has outdated code. So we go here, we click on request and code, and we just wait a little bit. I've done this before. Um, I'm just gonna give it just another try. And I've done this on different operating systems. Uh, but again, you can see that there's no, you know, in, in this email I've got, you know, I had 88 messages and there's nothing there at all, um, unread messages. But yeah, you know what, why don't we just go ahead and go back and again, Nothing is new. We'll go ahead and, and refresh it. We saw that little blue bar, nothing is new. So let's go ahead and try again. And you know, there's, there's usually a method, but, you know, if it doesn't work the first time, you know, you can sort of force manual and get by whatever terrible code is in the system. Another verification code was sent. We'll wait a few, a little, we'll wait a little bit longer here. And we'll go back. We'll go back to refreshing the screen. You'll see a blue bar over here. Whoops. Nothing. Nothing at all. We'll just go ahead and you saw that little blue. That's refreshing the screen when you see that blue bar going through. So obviously this is this is inaccessible. And this person has the audacity to tell me that I'm the problem, even though my email is working just fine. Um, she says blah, 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 and, you know, there's no issue on our end as other parties in various cases have been able to access the file through the OneDrive link. That's probably because they actually have a OneDrive account, and you should be able to access this through a some sort of method that does not, that, that, that does not require you to have OneDrive in order for it to be accessible. And, you know, that's the problem here is that now you've got a situation where the court system really believes that this is accessible when in fact it's not, unless you have a specific piece of software. And what's really happening here is that because you've got these interoperability uh, um, operation issues, you know, what's, what's going to happen is the court is going to become dependent on a single technological vendor as, a, you know, as opposed to a system that allows uh, anyone to access it, at least on the cloud or you know, or some other place without having to become beholden to a specific drive, server, or uh, some other code uh, that, that essentially subjugates the local government to a multinational corporation. And you can see this person just doesn't get it. Um, you know, you've got a uh, back and forth email is going by, and she really thinks she's being helpful. Um, and you know, this isn't the first time she didn't even respond to, to a message I sent last month. And I had to, and she, this is, this is all happening after I sent something to the appeals court. Um, and you know, she's sending me here. Why don't all links <laughs> open in the OneDrive app? So again, the problem is the email, right? Is you send the email, you're supposed to be able to access it. Uh, and she's sending me a link saying that here's, here's how helpful I am as a courtesy. I'm going to send you something, uh, that explains what, you know, what happens if you have the OneDrive app. Um, this is very typical of local governments in the United States, but what's what's not typical or intuitive is that I'm in Silicon Valley, and you know Microsoft is of course in Washington, you know the state of Washington, and you sort of wonder, you know, what's going on here um, in terms of getting these sorts of things uh, onto a system that allows transferability and that allows a a code to be written, not not a legal code, but just software code that prioritizes accessibility across different platforms. And not, you know, and, and, just, and that doesn't give local governments just either an incentive um, to coordinate with certain vendors, because uh, that's how you get corruption, right? You've got, a, you know, in, in California, which is a one party state, uh, you know, you go and then you get the vendor that, you know, you think is, is the one to, to go with uh, based on that vendor's, you know, either political contributions or political opinions. And, you know, that, and in, in forcing the general public, that wants to participate in government activities that are essential, what ends up happening is the government essentially forces people into becoming clients of a private corporation. And that's again, not what's supposed to happen. 
Um, but this is something that even the court staff just doesn't get it. They just don't understand what's happening. And that's why we have, well, we're supposed to have checks and balances. We're supposed to have a journalism sector that exposes these sorts of issues so that they can be fixed. Um, and it, with technology, it's different because, you know, you, if you, you typically have a single standard, uh, whether it's security or otherwise, uh, and you, everyone has to meet that standard. So there's an argument to be made that, well, it's okay to have a single vendor, especially if it's as reliable as Microsoft. And, or as well known and, and, and reputable as Microsoft. But the problem is that you know when you're when you're trying to link these different systems together, a lot of times you know Microsoft again is using code from 2017 that has not been updated based on what's you know at least what's what's in the interface to me. And so you've got you know because it's probably it may not be you know the, the contract may have gone to the lowest bidder. You've got you know perhaps all of this being handled by somebody in Bangalore, India as opposed to, you know, in other words, it's offshore in order to, to make sure that the cost works for everybody. And, you know, in order to send something up the chain and maybe do a change order, you know, it's going to cost money or it's going to, you know, something that you just don't want to deal with. But you can even see, like, you know, this person can't even spell research properly and, and is trying to tell me what's going on with the IT system or my own IT system. And this is, again, typical. Um, you know, this is just what happens when you, when you have sort of pitfalls of, of living in a one-party state is that and a lot of people are simply you know, hired based on likability, based on whether or not their political opinions. And I'm not saying this is the case here. I, I don't know this person. I've never met this person. I'm just going by the emails here. And I've made spelling mistakes before. It's just it's a combination of the spelling mistake and just the, you know, the, the fact that she did a bit of research and uh, gave me the wrong link and doesn't seem to understand the issue. And, you know, it's, it's not fair to expect, you know, I've run a small business before, so I've handled my own IT. It's not fair to expect a, a lower level court employee to understand IT. And again, the problem is just the arrogance and trying, or just the ignorance in trying to figure out, you know, what's going on and thinking that the problem is with me, as opposed to the system itself, which is really not designed for multiple platforms um, or for external platforms to be accessed, which is obvious to me. Um, and that's, again, one of the issues. It's the same thing with you in the private sector. When you're dealing with the private sector, you want to transfer all of your photos on the iPhone, in other words, on the iOS operating system. Um, you, know, you can't just go ahead and just you know, plug them in into a Google Drive without having you know, some sort of issues. Um, again, you can, but once you start accessing it, you may have to change the HEIC uh, file into a JPG that requires another vendor to be used and so on and so forth. Now, that's not necessarily an issue uh, in the private sector because, again, there's a lot of competition in the private sector. So, you, you know, if you have people that are, you know, loyal to Apple or, or loyal to Android and so on and so forth. And, you know, again, the problem is when the government starts to go into this sort of, you know, business, the government does not have competition, particularly in a one-party state. And, you, you know, and this is basically the issue is that everyone sort of doesn't seem to be on the same page which is a problem because government's job is to make sure that they maintain social cohesion. And if they can't fix these simple issues, you can see how contempt is something that becomes quite obvious. And then suddenly you've got politicians uh, being elected who are business people as opposed to you know, lawyers, uh, simply because people think they can get things done um, in order to bypass all the issues that I just explained right here.